Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm excited to share with you the fragrances that I wore for the week, and I'm super pumped to share a couple really amazing cheapies that are definitely, definitely worth a sniff, worth your time, and they're affordable enough that, you know, and I think they'd be great buy, buy it, okay, I'm getting too excited. They'd be great blind buys. I'm so pumped. I can't wait to share them with you. But before we get started, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the weird and wonderful family. It would be amazing to have you part of the community. And without further ado, let's get into this. The first fragrance I want to share with you today is Angel Nova by Mugler. Now, first of all, this totally matches my outfit and my lipstick, yay. So this fragrance is a very tart raspberry fragrance. It's got some rose in it. I think it's got lychee in it as well. Some people think that it smells like Delina. I don't think it smells anything like Delina, uh, but it's a very bright, vivacious, tart raspberry fragrance with some rose and definitely some woody notes. I think that there's the Aki Gala wood potentially in here or some version of uh, the Mugler patchouli. Yeah, I looked it up and it's the Aki Gala wood, which is I, apparently a synthetic version of patchouli, I think. That said, it just smells like quite woody. Uh, it's also got some benzoin in it. I find this to be one of the most potent fragrances that I've smelt from Mugler. Uh, it gets on you and it'll stay on you all day. Like this is good for 10 to 12 hours. Um, I really like the deep, deep dry down, like eight hours plus where it's kind of softened and sweetened up a little bit. But overall, I find this almost too potent for me. So a little bit too tart. Um, the raspberry is there, but it's just tart and in your face. And I find it loud. Oftentimes with the Mugler fragrances, because of the type of cap that they have, like it's just a sprayer out these weird plastic nozzles. Um, I, I usually can't smell the fragrance on the cap. So my aliens uh, can't ever smell it on the, on the nozzle. But on this one, it's so potent that I can smell it and it smells exactly the same way that it comes out. So it's sweet but tart, raspberry, in your face, woody. Uh, the rose is definitely in the background to that tart raspberry uh, lychee combo and then that Aki Gala wood. It's not for the faint of heart. I've tried pairing it with things. I'm still on the fence about this one. Like I kind of like it, kind of don't. So yeah, it certainly wouldn't be one that I would repurchase, but I keep pulling it out and trying it because you just never know with me. <laughs> I have another fragrance. It was kind of a little bit of a miss for me still kind of unsure, and it is Desire 2 by Dua. This is the dupe for Zerjoff's Cruz de Sur Du. This is a very, very green mango, and uh, that's exactly what it smells like. So you put it on, it smells uber green mango, so almost like uh, a mango that's not quite ripe, not necessarily even the flesh, but the skin of it. So you know, it's not one of those sweet, juicy mangoes. That said, I kind of like this. The jury's still out. It lasts quite a long time. As I had recalled before, it seemed to go a little bit more mango milkshake on me. And that's what I'm looking for. It's kind of a mango milkshake or like a, a juicy mango smoothie type feel. I love Mango Skin by Wilhelm Parfumery. I love um, Dirty Mango by Richard Perfumes, but those are both a little bit sweeter mango, even though they're interesting. So they've got some interesting components to them, uh, which I really enjoy. This is definitely interesting because it's not your typical mango. So it's got that greenness just not what I was anticipating. So we will see. Like I, I think that I'll enjoy wearing this in the summer because I think it'll feel refreshing as opposed to just sweet, sweet, sweet. So we'll see, but so far still not quite sure on this one. Now a fragrance that I am sure on, like immediately, immediately sure, is Unknown Pleasures by Kerosene. Now, this was a generous sample from, I believe, Greyhound Mama. So thank you so much. Uh, she sent me samples eons ago, and it's just taken me forever to get through, through them because I have so many samples these days, which I'm very grateful for. It's so fun 
to be able to try all these new fragrances. Unknown Pleasures. Oh my goodness. Like this is so freaking delicious that I'm in, I, I'm in love with it. Like I want to get this. Now, my friend Hesse, she has a kerosene one. Uh, I think it was a sample. I don't know if it was Unknown Pleasures that she let me smell. And same thing. I'm like, holy crap, this is amazing. Like, I just loved it so much. So this is another one. Maybe that's the one she let me smell. I am in love with this. Like, it's delicious. It's warm. It's sensual. Uh, it's just phenomenal. So I'm going to read you the notes. So the notes for Unknown Pleasures are lemon, caramel, vanilla. Like, right there. Like, you've got me. You've got me. Then it has Earl Grey tea, bergamot, honey, and tonka bean. So looking on Fragrantica, uh, it says that it's kind of citrusy. I guess I can get that on the cap, but on my skin, it was just an instantly kind of vanilla, uh, vanilla caramel, uh, a little hint, a little twist of that. Um, I guess a little bit of citrus, but it's, it's paired with that creaminess from the caramel and the vanilla. That tea just adds a certain amount of depth. Tonka bean in there just adds a nice warmth. This is so scrumptious. Now, as far as when you would wear this, um, I think that you could wear it, like, honestly, it's a gourmand. Like, to me, this is straight up gourmand. So you could, and it's in the same kind of family as Proceliande by Soradora, Lyra by Zerzhov, that kind of scent profile, Princess by Killian. They've all got a warmth, a little bit of powderiness, a little bit of citrus, a little bit of cakiness somehow. So this is just another one that is just stellar. The longevity on this was fantastic. Like I got at least seven or so hours on it. Seriously, this is amazing. It's definitely, definitely going on my wish list. Please weigh in. If you've tried Unknown Pleasures, share with us what your experience has been because this was just fantastic. Like you, you, it was gourmand, but you still smelt sophisticated. And that's what I love. I love it when a gourmand smells really rich, luxe, sophisticated. Oh my goodness. So good. Now the next fragrance that I wanted to try was Milk Plus by Commodity. Hesse gave me a huge sample. So I had tried it, I think once, uh, and really enjoyed it. Um, I, I can honestly say like smelling this milk plus definitely definitely a fan of this one um it it smells soft there's a bit of creaminess to it um it smells like actually when I put on the unknown pleasures uh I thought to my the reason why I tried this one was because I thought to myself does this smell like milk because it was giving me that same sort of vibe they don't smell alike. Uh, there's similarities as far as the softness, the warmth, the sweetness. Uh, Unknown Pleasures definitely has more sweet, and then it's got that little bit of a, uh, a little bit of that citrus that does come out with the bergamot and the lemon. Whereas this one is uh, doesn't have any of that citrus uh, coming to play. It's just sweet. Uh, slightly lactonic, um, just not not really creamy, but kind of milky, powdery. Uh, it's it's delicious. So I'm going to read the notes on this one too. So Milk Plus by Commodity has has marshmallow. It's got milk in the heart. It has white cedar and musk. The base is woody notes and amber. So yeah, just a powdery, soft, uh, kind of milky fluffy, warm fragrance. I would automatically assume that there was, uh, there was vanilla in this, uh, but I, I get the cedar, like the cedar is what's bringing the depth in there. Whereas I think in Unknown Pleasures, the tea is bringing the depth in there. The two of them layered together, I think would be absolutely scrumptious. Uh, but I really, really love this one. And the longevity is excellent on this too. So this is warm and cozy. Um, I think that this is probably best in the fall and the winter. But honestly, on a cold, rainy day, this would be so comforting uh, all year round. So I, yeah, I love this one.
So I met up with my friend Val again. Now she has recently uh, just delved right into the Middle Eastern fragrances and has bought like a ton of them. So she was sharing me uh, a bunch of her findings and I think I'm actually gonna have her on the channel. I'm gonna start having kind of guests on. So I wanna have Hesse on, I wanna have Lori on, I wanna have Val on. They've got really decent collections. All of them have different styles. They all like different things, but it's so good to hear uh, other people's viewpoints. So I want to start doing that. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. I think it would be really fun. And then you're not just hearing me talk about fragrance. You get to hear other people. Okay, now I'm just blithering. So moving on. Uh, met with Val and the two standouts. So I smelt so many that I couldn't tell you which ones I like. There were quite a few that I really loved and thought were fantastic but there were two in particular that stood out that I have to talk about. The first one is by Latafa. I don't think it's on Fragrantica yet, uh, but it's by Latafa and it's called Tharwa Gold. Now, first of all, you're seeing the bottle. I just think that's the coolest bottle. It's super heavy and luxe. I think it costs 35 US on uh, Fragrance Net. So really great price and it smells so similar to uh, Libre Intense. So it's got a slight kick of that lavender, like you definitely get it, but it's not as potent as the original Libre. And I just thought it was beautiful. I actually think I prefer the Tharwa Gold over Libre Intense and especially the price, like the bottle's gorgeous. The Libre bottle is amazing. So the YSL bottle is stunning. You can't beat that. The Tharwa Gold is completely different. It's a little bit spacey and weird, but but I loved the bottle. Uh, but the fragrance is so, so similar at a fraction of the cost. So for me, Libre Intense is one that I really, really enjoy. I really do appreciate the quality of the fragrance, uh, like that whole entire line. I think it's a really beautiful line. It's not my favorite fragrance profile. So for whatever reason, I, I do like lavender and fragrances, but this one, not quite as loving it as uh, some others, even though I do recognize uh, how how beautiful full of fragrance it is and understand why it's so popular. Uh, but I still would like some sort of version of that in my collection. So for me, because it's not a massive love, I don't love, love, love YSL. I don't love, love like I'm not a hardcore fan. Uh, but I do like that scent profile here and there. It wouldn't be one that I would reach for a ton, uh, but it's also one that I'd like to bring to you more often because a lot of people really do enjoy it. So to me, to buy something that's similar uh, so I can talk about that scent profile, and that's what I'm starting to kind of try to do, whether it's a dupe or whether it's something that's similar to go, okay, this is the, the dupe of this fragrance. Uh, or talk about fragrances that are kind of similar. So, uh, you know, for instance, um, you know, I just talked about Unknown Pleasures, uh, Brosseliande, Princess, they are all different, but they all kind of scratch the same gourmand, cozy, slightly t citrus, uh, cakey vibe somehow for me. You don't have to have all of them. Like that's the thing. So I kind of want to start to do that once in a while where I'm talking about a fragrance and go, this is another great option that kind of scratches the same itch. Hope that makes sense. So Tharwa Gold, if it's a fragrance that you like, but you're like, I, I don't know if I want to spend the money because there's other ones I like better, but you still want to be able to smell like that once in a while, Tharwa Gold is a great alternative to Leap Intense. Um, you know, I haven't smelt them side by side, but I was re like, I knew instantly that that's kind of what they were trying to go for. But I, I honestly think I liked it better and the longevity on it was really, really excellent. So I just highly recommend that one. The other one that literally wowed me, like so big time wowed me was Alhambra's Kismet Angel. Now that is like, they're trying to dupe 
the angel share by Killian. I'm sorry, Killian, but I I, I liked the the Kismet Angel better. For me, there's something in angel share, and I find it in my uh, like I've got a Dua dupe uh, angel angelic elixir by Dua. It has the same issue. There's something in there that just as soon as I smell it, it makes me feel just a tiny bit sick. I don't know why, but it's just there. This didn't have that. So I smelt it. It didn't do that instant thing in my head or whatever. So Kismet Angel, it still has that rum, like that boozy vibe, but somehow the the apple pie aspect of it is just a little bit more tempered. Uh, it To me, it was smoother. Um, it was just delicious. So Angel Share, I would never buy it because I struggle a little bit with it. Like I, I like it, but it's a little bit too much for me somehow. The Dua Angelic Elixir, I like pairing it with Angel Muse, but I wouldn't want to wear it on my own. I just struggle with it a little bit. The Kismet Angel is definitely my angel of choice. I am in love with it. It's sweet. It gives you that same apple pie-ish type vibe, but it's somehow tempered. It's a little bit more smooth or silky. I just thought it was amazing. I got to read you the notes because they're different than um, the angel share. So this one has vanilla, honeycomb, amber, cognac, cinnamon, caramel, tonka bean, and dark chocolate. So the, that's the notes in Kismet Angel. The notes in Angel Share are cognac, cinnamon, tonka bean, oak, praline, vanilla, and sandalwood. So quite different, but they get a similar kind of vibe, but I just like the Kismet Angel better. And it was, I think, $35 as well. So, so affordable, like so freaking affordable. And longevity, phenomenal. I could smell that one way longer than the uh, Tharwa Gold, like the, the Libre Intense one. So it lasted way longer than that one. So I'd say about eight, 10 hours at least. So really, really impressive longevity. And that is definitely, definitely one I'm getting as soon as possible. I really want to try Bright Peach by Alhambra. I think it's by Alhambra as well. Uh, they straight up du dupe the, the packaging for Tom Ford. Uh, but apparently it's a little bit more of a brighter, juicier peach. So I'm really curious about that because I think it would be great for spring and summer. But overall... Uh, definitely, definitely loved both of those options uh, from Latafa slash Al Alhambra. Definitely worth checking out for sure. I'll leave it all linked down below. What about you? What was your hit for the week? What was your miss? For me, my miss was Angel Nova. My major, major hit was that Unknown Pleasures. Like, I am in love with that. Milk Plus was amazing too. Those Middle Eastern ones were just so, so impressive. So uh, overall, I had a great week. So please leave your hits and misses in the comments. We'd love to hear and weigh in. Uh, if you've tried Unknown Pleasures, what are your thoughts on it? If you've tried Tharwa Gold or if you've tried uh, Kismet Angel, please weigh in and, and share your thoughts, especially if you've tried Angel Share uh, and you've compared the two or compared Libre Intense to the Tharwa Gold. Please leave it in the comments. That's always re really helpful. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.